everybody, this is Zoe from No Safer Place. Now, I wasn't really sure how to start this vlog or whether I should even do it. So I'm not sure if you guys are aware, but I had my three day autonomic testing in London last week. Now I was supposed to vlog the whole thing and I was really keen on doing it. I took my camera, my tripod, everything. But the experience just proved to be too much. I mean, I could just about get back to the hotel, let alone sit and talk about everything that happened. And I was really emotional, everything was kind of up and down and I didn't want the vlog to be too scary for people having it done. Now I did record about a five minute vlog on the most intense day of testing, just me behind the camera, mainly because I didn't want to forget everything. The second day was so intensive, there was so much to remember, I had so many tests. And that's why I filmed that short clip, which I will insert soon, just because I wanted you guys to go in with as much information if you're going for the testing yourself, or if you're just nosy and want to know more about my life. Because what I found was the letter that I received when I was booked in for the autonomic testing didn't really give me any inkling as to what the test would be like. And they were pretty awful, and I really wasn't expecting it to be that bad which is why I wanted to mark down every single thing that happened. So I arrived at the National Hospital of Neurology and Neurosurgery on Monday. So Monday was just meant to be fitting the monitor, which was a 24 hour blood pressure monitor. I didn't realize that it went off every 20 minutes, which is a lot. So they just fit you with a cuff here. You have a little monitor around your side that keeps track of everything that's going on. So obviously it went off every 20 minutes and you had a diary of about 100 entries and every time it went off you had to write down your posture, if you had any symptoms and at what time it was. On top of that there was also about 30, I think there was 33 activities that you had to complete in the 24 hour period. And they were a whole range of things such as walking briskly for three minutes, walking up a flight of stairs, laying down, standing up. There was a whole range of activities that you had to follow specifically. And I found it difficult to complete in the 24 hour period because I went in to hospital at 11.30. It was fitted by 12, which was perfect because I wasn't due back till one o'clock the next day. But I then had to go to their daycare unit and I had to stay there for about four hours until a doctor discharged me. So I lost so much time just sitting around waiting because obviously I couldn't do any of these activities because I was just sat in a chair waiting for a doctor. So yeah, it was a real squeeze to get them all in. I managed to do most of them. And then I had to be back by one o'clock on the Tuesday for the most intensive day of testing. I will insert the clip here of everything that happened and I really hope you find this useful. Hello everybody, um, I was going to vlog this whole experience but yesterday I got my 24 hour blood pressure monitor fitted and I'll talk about that more in detail once I get home but I just had the extensive testing on my second day and I wanted to make sure that I recorded this now just so I can tell you every little thing, I don't want to forget anything so I thought it best to film this now just as I've got back and also for me, I want to remember everything that they've done, just so I can remind myself when I look back at this and I get my results. So today I had the autonomic screening test and I also had a tilt test. I had had a tilt test before and I knew what that entailed, this was just a more intense version. But the first test, the autonomic screening, I had never had before. And I wasn't really prepared for how intense it was, that's why I thought it best to do a video now about this because... There was so much that I wasn't told that would be done and I thought it would be good if any of you are waiting for this test to know exactly what you'll get. So I got sent in at about one o'clock. He said that it would take about two to two and a half hours. At one o'clock he just went through everything with me. He, he explained to me everything that would be happening and asked me loads of questions about my background, my medical history, how I was feeling, symptoms on a day to day basis, just all things like that. That went on for about 20 minutes, then we went over to the bed, I had to take my shoes and socks off, also don't wear any jewellery because that all had to come off. So we laid down, he put a heart rate monitor, I think it was, on this finger, he then put a blood pressure cuff on me, he then put some ECG leads, two on my chest and one on my ankle, he also put a cannula in my arm which I wasn't expecting, I was obviously expecting blood tests but I am very needle phobic so I wasn't expecting a cannula so I thought I would just mention that. So that was all set up and then I was also strapped to the bed as well. 
and then he just did some initial readings so he did a few blood pressure cuffs and a heart rate monitor when I was laying down and then again he made me stand up so we did that a few times and then we started doing a bit more intense activities so we did some random things like I had to hold a hot water bottle in my hand and he then did some readings I then had to put my hand in a pack of ice and he then did a reading after a minute and a half I had to blow like I was blowing up a balloon into this tube as hard as I could and hold that for 12 to 15 seconds which was very very difficult and if you can't do it don't worry because neither could I and you also had to hold this beanbag type thing and just clench it at a certain level of pressure which they test for you for three minutes which was really hard and I actually, I actually did it so hard that my blood pressure cuff expanded and exploded everywhere so that was interesting I mean even he laughed at that um, we also did mental arithmetic so I had to lay there while he was doing my blood pressure and I had to count back from 500 in factors of seven which was intense I'm not terrible at maths but when you're under that kind of pressure and you're feeling really anxious and stressed anyway it was pretty hard so that was kind of <laughs> the more fun bit actually that bit wasn't horrific I coped with all that obviously I was getting some symptoms but nothing too serious so that went on for about an hour and a half then he told me that I had to do a tilt test and that could last up to 45 minutes before we did that we did my blood tests laying down and then we did my blood tests with me at a 60 degree angle so whilst I was up in that 60 degrees that is what they call a tilt test and you stay there for as long as you possibly can because obviously you start to feel symptoms as your posture changes so my heart rate increased rapidly my hands were sweating I just felt really really I mean my clothes were literally stuck to me that is how hot I got it was just really really intense I lasted with that for about 15 to 20 minutes it wasn't long at all and he actually suggested that I stop I wanted to try and keep going because I just thought any results that I can get even if it means me passing out I will do because I have waited for this for so long so he eventually stopped me and told me that we had the results that we needed and he thought it was best for me to stop so I then relaxed for about half an hour and he let me go and then tomorrow I go back and have a liquid meal and they basically do the tilt test again but just to see if food exasperates it and things like that but as I say I will do a better vlog after this will probably all be in the same video but I just wanted to tell you everything that they done just so I didn't forget anything or leave any parts out so this will probably be a random little section in the vlog I'm not feeling anywhere near as bad as I thought I would I thought I would feel worse but I think because I was so excited to have the majority of the testing out the way it was more of a relief for me than anything let me know if you have any questions about this because I would love to talk to you about it in more detail because it is scary and it was very unknown I didn't know it would be that bad so I don't want any of you to go in unknown like I did and a couple of things I forgot to mention in that part of the vlog was they also did testing with you hyperventilating so you had to sit there and do this for a minute which was interesting and then also some deep breathing activities so deep breath in and out and you had to do quite a few of those different kind of breathing activities which I did forget to mention in the last part of the vlog and then on the Wednesday it was actually a kind of simple day I went in at nine o'clock which was nice and early. I forgot to mention as well that my appointment was at nine o'clock so I had to be at the daycare unit at half past eight so they can fit you with a tracker, very Hunger Games-esque, and just kind of sign you in and then get a porter to take you down to the correct part of the hospital. So the third day of testing was just another tilt test as such so they laid me down then they tilted me up to a 60 degree angle I think it is you're all strapped in you can choose to have your arms in and out I prefer to have mine in because I faint so much I think it made me feel a lot safer to be completely strapped in in case anything happened so they tilt you up for 10 minutes so it was a lot less intensive than the one I had yesterday which was lasting up to 45 minutes 
So you then were laid down. You were then made to drink a milky drink laying down, which I really struggled with. She had to tilt me up slightly because I cannot drink lying down. So you had to drink two quite big cups of milkshake. It was delicious. I was so nervous about this bit because I really, really am fussy with food and drink. But I loved it. I could have quite happily had more. And then the most boring part of the test, you've had the drink. You then have to lay on a bed for 45 minutes to kind of let the food digest. And then you're tilted back up to see if food affects you, your blood pressure, your heart rate, just to see if it makes things worse when you're having food. And there was no cannula for that one so I was really really happy about that because as you know I hate needles. And then it got to the end of the test so I was really excited. I'd been told that results would be four to six weeks which was absolutely fine by me. I asked again at the hospital and they said six months. And six months is a really really long time. They told me that they were having a meeting about me this week and they would collate all my evidence, all the data that they'd got over the past few days and decide if my appointment needed to be brought forward, which I'm hoping it is because <laughs> I'm really not coping as I am at the moment and I do need help. So if they could get it pushed forward from September, which it is at the moment, I would be really, really grateful. Now, the part that I was dreading talking about, and I'm not gonna talk about it in too much detail at the moment because I don't know everything about it and it's not 100% been confirmed. I mean it has and that's why I'm kind of frustrated because he told me that I had this new condition but then said I can't really tell you much about it until your results which was just terrifying. So I've been having really bad joint problems recently and I didn't think anything of it. My knees have been really playing up, my fingers have really been playing up but I don't know I just didn't really connect the two because because joint problems really aren't a symptom of POTS so I didn't put two and two together but I did this five minute test when I was with him to determine how flexible I was and things like that and he then asked me if I'd been diagnosed with joint hypermobility syndrome and it's something I've heard of because a lot of people I know with POTS have this but I just didn't think I would have it which I know is stupid because I know it's really common for people with POTS but I kind of thought oh well, life won't throw me another bad hand. I was wrong. I don't really want to talk about it now mainly because I haven't processed it yet but obviously there may be more problems apart from that which is a worry especially when you have to wait six months. Obviously I've been researching it a little he told me a bit about it at the hospital but I'm scared. I think it scared me mainly because who knows what else I have. I honestly thought I just had POTS and that was it. So to find out that there may be more and that I have to wait so long is terrifying. The testing ended five days ago today and today is the first day that I've been able to properly get out of bed, get dressed, wash my hair, get properly made up and it's taken me almost a week to recover and I wish I'd known that. Now I thought I'd let you know that because although I'm lucky enough to be able to work from home, I know a lot of you aren't and to have a five day recovery period, I did not know that at all and I think it would be really helpful if you do have a job and suffer with POTS and have to do this testing that you will probably need some recovery time off work afterwards. Another thing I wanted to talk about was the hotel. Now, I chose to stay in the hotel. They put you up, they pay for it, they pay for breakfast. It's really fantastic. But I chose there so I didn't have to travel. But I was put in a hotel 15 minutes from a tube station and then it was a five minute tube journey. Now, I know it doesn't seem that much. But I assumed the hotel would be really, really nearby because obviously after the testing, I was completely zonked and we ended up having to pay for taxis and Ubers because I just couldn't possibly walk anywhere or get on public transport, even for one stop. Especially in London, you have to take into account how many stairs there are in a tube station, and I couldn't even walk up one, let alone a flight of, say, 30. So that's a tip. If you are able to get home, it would probably be so much easier. So yes, I am due a letter next week giving me a brief summary of how my tests went, but they said they can't give any real results until we're face-to-face, -face, so... It's a waiting game and I will let you guys know as soon as I have any updates. But I guess we'll see how it goes. I hope you all have enjoyed this video. Let me know what you would like to see more of on my channel. And I hope to see you all again soon. Thank you. Bye.